Hello, my name is Rob Wilson, and this is the Video Gadgets Journal, connecting you with your technology. This is a Google HTC Nexus 9, and if you've never used a tablet before, then you're in the right place, because this is the complete beginner's guide to using this tablet. So you're at the very beginning of this technological story. You have seen everyone else poking, jabbing and swiping touchscreens for a couple of years now and you've decided to have a go yourself or someone's bought you a tablet as a gift. Either way, welcome to this journey of discovery. It's going to be an intriguing, informing and very entertaining one and I want to help you every step of the way. The very first thing you will need to do is to turn the tablet on and to do this you need to press this power button on the side of a tablet for about 5 seconds. When you see this Google logo you will know that the tablet has come alive. This complete beginner's guide is designed for owners of the Google Nexus 9 but you can apply many of these tips to other Android tablets. Android is the operating system of certain tablets. Of course, the most daunting prospect is the very first time you switch on the device. So here's how to get through the first five minutes. First, some very basics about how the tablet works. Even when you turn on the tablet, it likes to sleep a lot to conserve battery. So if you ever pick up your tablet and the screen is not on, you can either tap the power button or, and this is a unique feature to the Nexus 9, you can double tap anywhere on the screen to wake it up. As you can no doubt see, the screen is currently upside down, but that's easily fixed by picking up the tablet. The screen will automatically rotate the correct way up, and even if you rotate the tablet, what's displayed on screen will rotate as well to match the orientation. This is a feature of many applications on the tablet that we will look at in future guides. Okay, so when you first switch on your tablet, you will need to set it up, and this is the very first welcome screen you will encounter. You will need to select your language so it's time to touch the screen. With your finger, you can press on the screen and swipe up and down, which will move the selected language. It's like pushing a coin along a table. You can also flick your finger and the options will flick in tandem as if they are on elastic. When you've finished having a little bit of fun, select your language and then press the yellow arrow button to proceed to the next screen. Yep, as you're starting to discover, the touchscreen is as responsive as pressing real physical buttons. As you navigate through the setup screens, you will have the options at the bottom of the screen to skip a step and move forward, or go back a step in case you made a mistake and go to the previous screen. If you do make any mistakes at this point, don't worry, as you will have the chance to fix these through the settings on your tablet. But that's another guide for another day. After the welcome screen, the next screen you will encounter is the select Wi-Fi screen. A lot of what your tablet does requires an internet connection, and for the purposes of this guide I will assume that you have access to the internet through Wi-Fi. Identify your own private Wi-Fi connection and press on it. This is the very first time you will see the keyboard pop up at the bottom of the screen. It works just like a real keyboard. Press each letter and they will be typed on screen. We will cover the keyboard in more detail in a later guide, but for now the two important buttons you might need to use are the shift key that change letters from lower to uppercase for one letter press and the general number button below that changes your keyboard into a numbers and symbols keyboard. Now the reason you're seeing the keyboard is because you need to type in your password for your private Wi-Fi connection. I'm afraid this is one thing I can't help you with but you can toggle the show password checkbox to make sure you've typed it in correctly. Once you've completed your password, press the connect button. When it successfully connects to the internet, the first thing your tablet will do is check to make sure it has the latest software installed. This will almost certainly mean you will see this screen that asks you to update your tablet. I recommend doing this to save time later and it's easy to do at this point. When you confirm the update, the tablet will download the necessary updates and restart your tablet for you, so you will end up back at the welcome screen. Simply use the same previous instructions in this guide to get you to the same point in the process. The next screen asks you to add your Google account. 
to use this tablet to its full potential, you will need a Google account in order to download applications and use Google services. For the purposes of this guide, I will assume you don't have a Google account and we are not going to set one up yet. We will do that in another guide. So for now, press the skip button. Confirm that you don't want to set up an account at this time and then you will be taken to the name screen. It's another chance to use the keyboard, so type away. Note that at the start of a line, the keyboard will begin in uppercase. When you've finished, you can press the green tick button on the right side of the keyboard. And finally for this screen, press the next button. The next screen will ask you about preferences for Google services. You can read the text here if you wish, but to summarize, Google wants to know your location and the tablet can do this. It will help with applications such as Google Maps and Facebook. All of the options are ticked and I recommend keeping at least the top two options ticked. The third option is about sending Google Diagnostics information, which doesn't help you, so you can untick it if you wish. Press the next button and that's it, congratulations, setup of your tablet is now complete. Press the finish button and see what happens. Depending on which way you've been holding the tablet, the screen orientation may go off to one side, but remember, all you have to do is pick up the tablet and it should reorientate itself. As you are using the tablet for the first time, a lot of tipped speech bubbles will appear, so take the time to read them when they do appear. This is the tablet home screen, which we'll look at in detail in a future guide. All I want you to do for now, however, is to tilt the screen between portrait and landscape and see how the icons rotate and shuffle about to match the orientation of the screen. Before we end part one of this guide, there are two important buttons I want to show you. The first is this white button in the bottom center portion of the screen. This is your application drawer, and if you press it, it will show all the applications you have on the tablet. You can swipe from right to left to move through the different screens and see all the applications you have. If you want to try out any of the applications, press on them and see what happens. But whatever you do, this next button is the most important one for you right now. It's the hollow white circle at the very bottom of the screen. If you get stuck, panic, or simply want to start a game from the very beginning, press this button on any screen. It's called the home button and it will always take you back to the home screen. Okay, we've covered a lot of ground in this first video, so I think it's time for a rest. To put your tablet to sleep, you can tap the power button on the side of a tablet. This will instantly shut off the screen, but it doesn't turn off the tablet, so you will be able to start it off from wherever you left it. To wake up the tablet, you can tap the power button again, or, as we did at the very start of this video, double tap the tablet screen anywhere. One last thing, when you wake the tablet, you will be shown the lock screen. To unlock the tablet, simply swipe from the bottom of the screen to the top of the screen, like this. It will return you to your last location when you put the tablet to sleep. That's the end of part one of the beginner's guide to the Nexus 9. Here's a summary of what you have done today. If you want to repeat any of the steps, you can click on them to take you back to that part of the video. Thank you for watching this video and welcome to the world of tablets. For the next part of this guide, simply click on the screen now as displayed. If you do have any questions, by all means post a comment and I will try my best to help you. Make sure you subscribe to Video Gadgets Journal for more beginner's guides and share this video if you think it could help somebody. See you soon in the next part of the guide.